Oftentimes I've been with people discussing what Soma's doing and how we came about and the things we emphasize. And there's a lot of people who think that we actually don't emphasize gathering together as though the weekly gathering is not an important aspect of what we do. And that's just not true. We believe it's very important. Again, we don't believe it's sufficient, but it's very important. As we look at Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, we're, we're reminded that we should not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but we should, we should regularly get together and encourage one another as we see the day approaching. And as I've studied that particular passage and as you understand the, the Jewish context, you realize that people were not existing as just individuals isolated from one another. It wasn't a, a, con- it wasn't a, a command to a bunch of individuals to come to a gathering. It was likely a command to households that needed to come together as households. So they weren't all by themselves as a household, but they got to meet with others who were really working through, what does it mean to be God's people in this day and age? How do we not give up? It's discouraging. Some of us are getting persecuted. Some of us are, are losing things because of this. Uh, and so we needed to come, they needed to come together to be encouraged, to not lose heart, to not give up on the mission. And so for us, it's an imperative that we get people together regularly because living this mission of making disciples out in the everyday life is hard stuff. It is not easy. And to do it all alone and not have groups of people who can tell you their stories and, and remind you to not give up. And they can sometimes you can even make a plea to the larger body and say, hey, we need your help. This group over here needs some extra resources or extra people or extra time. Could we move some of you in that direction, either physically or at least with your hearts, to give and to give time? So that coming together is really imperative for the mission at a larger scale in a city or a a significant context. So we come together every week, and we really have three purposes when we come together. We We want to exhort people. We want to remind them through exhortation. This is who your God is. We often say it this way, that the gathering is the upward focus of our week, reminding us that this is all about him who saved us. So we have an upward focus on God the Father. He loves you, he saved you, he made you his children. You're dearly loved, though you were enemies of God, you've been made children of God, therefore go love one another in the way you've been loved. That we need that reminder of who our Father is on a weekly basis, otherwise we're gonna look to something else for our significance or our security or our hope. And we need to be reminded Jesus is our King. Whatever we do the least of these, we do unto him. And so let's not forget who our king is. Let's not forget what our king did, that he laid down his life for us. He did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. People need to hear that proclaimed on a regular basis so they don't forget who their king is and what their king does. So that when they go out, they say, that's right, I'm exhorted to serve my king. Whenever we do this to the least of these, we're doing it unto him. And they need that upward reminder that you're not doing this on your own. You have the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. So for us in our gathering, it's very Trinitarian in nature. Remember, you're dearly loved by God the Father. You worship and serve Christ the King. And you're filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead. We need to hear that on a weekly basis. So we go out with that hope, with that love, with that power, with that that posture. So that's the exhortation emphasis of our gathering, but we also need to come together and be encouraged. We need to have someone who's up teaching say, you know, I'm in this game with you. I'm struggling, it's hard. Even as I'm teaching what I'm about to teach, this has been hard for me this week as I've been trying to be on mission and apply this. Here's where I failed. Here's where the gospel's given me hope. Here's where God's growing me in repentance and faith. And so not only the people who are teaching need to be in the mission field and then speak out of the mission field that they're in all week long to a group of other people who can say, yeah, it's good, we're not alone. We're not the only ones who are struggling. But we also want to get people up, and we do this regularly, who tell their story about their life on mission and how their mission community is moving forward and what they're struggling through. So the weekly gathering gives chance for there not only to be exhortation, but encouragement both from those who are speaking as well as from the groups who are on mission that get to come up and share their stories. And it doesn't just end there because we also do dialogue in our teaching. So often we'll throw a question out and people can then speak out of the context of their life, out of the context of their mission, which allows them to share from, from their everyday stuff, their everyday experience, what they're going through, which is hugely encouraging to one another. And then we also want it to be empowering. We want people to come away from the gathering knowing that they're really well equipped in the gospel, that the things that we're teaching them aren't just, this is who God is and what he's done, but this is who you are and how now you can go and live in a new way. So it has application for the mission field that they're about to get on that next week so they feel even better equipped and empowered by the Spirit to go and live it out. 
Now, there's a variety of things we do when we gather to help them with that. Not only do we keep that in mind when we're teaching, all of our teachers, we want them to make sure it's gospel-centered, that it's Trinitarian in nature, that we talk about God the Father's love, Jesus the Son's servanthood, and laying down his life for us, and the Holy Spirit's empowering. But we also want to make sure it's always applicable for what they're going to go do on mission. So it isn't just a message devoid of life or a message devoid of living it out. It's actually teaching in such a way that it equips them to go obey everything Jesus has commanded us on the mission field he sent us. So all of our teachers are expected to do that and trained to do that. And it doesn't just end there. We also uh, encourage people then to remember the, the sacrifice of Jesus through taking of, of the, the bread and the cup, taking the Lord's Supper together and remembering him. And it's a great opportunity for people to practice proclaiming the gospel to one another. Our, our missional communities come together. There's, they go to the table. They take the bread. They dip it in the cup. And they, they speak the gospel to one another in light of the message they just heard. Which one of the things that I love about that is they're actually learning how to hear God's word and speak it into someone else's life in a Christ-centered way. So they're learning how to speak the gospel in many varied forms, but still holding to the truths of Jesus' life and his death and his resurrection, which in, in, in a sense is training them to become much more fluent in their gospel communication. But what's, what I love also about it is when they do it together, they're reminded we're in this together because of Jesus. And they can look at each other and remember, we're doing this because of him. He gave his life for us. That's why we're on this mission together. And so it's a huge encouragement to be reminded weekly, he died for us, we live for him. And, and then oftentimes what happens is they'll be very particular in how they apply the truths of the gospel as they serve the elements to one another in light of what they know the group's going through. Sometimes groups are going through very difficult times. And so now they get to speak the truth of the gospel to the real issues that they're going through on mission, which only encourages them to stay in the game. I remember recently my missional community got together around the table and, and one of the couples is really suffering. They're going through some very difficult things and the whole group knows about it. So instead of it's just kind of like, you know, kind of in a generic form, remembering the body of Christ and, and his blood shed, which super great that we do that, but we got to very specifically speak hope into their situation. And, and one of the younger leaders who I'm training in our group got to lead the communion time, and in that moment, he just stopped and looked at them, and he said, this is for you guys. And, and, he, and he served them communion in a way that spoke to their real needs that they were going through so that they would know there's hope and there's healing and there's help for their life right now. And so what's beautiful is when a missional community is on mission all week long together and then they take communion together, it, it's profound because they're in it for Jesus together. And their worship of Jesus just is that much more um, like full and, and exuberant, even in the midst of difficulty and, and suffering. And then, of course, we, we, have song, we have singing like most churches do, but I'll tell you, there's something different when a group of people are on mission all week long and then they get together and they sing songs about their Savior who they've been serving side by side with all week long. Anybody who, who's been on a mission trip and stops and sings music every night at the end of a very tough day of struggle and difficulty, I mean, you sing in a, from a whole different place. You, you sing from your heels. You are like saying, yes, I believe this. I am so into this. Jesus, you are so amazing. You suffered for us we're just getting a little taste of what it's like for you to have given your life for us wow we love you and I'll tell you worship I mean it's no longer it's no longer hugely dependent upon a worship leader to have to get everybody pumped up to sing about a God they don't know and they haven't been serving all week they're eager to tell him how much he means to them if they've been on mission for him all week long and then when they hear others sing it they're reminded that's right this is why we're doing it don't ever forget He's so worthy of all of this. So let's get back out for another week. Let's go serve our king. It's going to be hard, but let's pray for each other. And so then around that communion time and that time of worship, they get to just lay hands on one another. And that is such a rich time of being able to build each other up, encourage them, exhort them, and see them be empowered again by the Holy Spirit to go out as a group filled with joy serving their king.